Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ken here, and I'm going to stand up with you. Let's see if we can do this. I probably should have done this before I started the live stream, but listen, I want to spend some time with you and talk about raising money. Talk about raising money for real estate. If you're in real estate investing, I will guarantee you that you probably don't know everything that you need to know about fundraising for real estate. And that's why we're holding this event next weekend. Uh, it starts Saturday morning at 10 a.m. The doors open at 8.30, so you can come and get your tickets, check in. We're doing an hour of networking on Saturday morning. And uh, sorry, I had something stuck in my mouth. <laughs> we're going to uh, put on some coffee and tea and some uh, donuts and all that stuff first thing in the morning. Uh, because a lot of people are going to be there. We're going to have 200 people there in Toronto next weekend. And I want everybody to give everybody a chance to network with people. Hey, listen, at the, at the end of the day, what I want to tell you guys and what I want you to understand is that if, if you've ever thought about getting into real estate investing or you're in real estate investing, the number one skill that you have to learn to get good at is raising money, raising capital. And it's not easy to do this. It can be very, very intimidating to do it. Uh, I just happen to have mastered these skills. And what's, I think, really unique as for me as a teacher and why you might want to consider coming to this event next weekend is to kind of have two types of expertise coming together. And I could be the only real estate coach in Canada that can actually say this. I have an expertise in digital marketing. And uh, my companies over the last 15 years have made millions of dollars because I know how to run Facebook ads and Instagram ads and YouTube ads and LinkedIn ads. I know how to build the websites and the funnels. I build online courses. I sell millions of dollars in these products and services. But what really makes this special and why this event is so important to you is I also have figured out ways to use those digital marketing skills to raise money. And that's what we're going to talk about next weekend. But listen, this is an event that is specifically designed for people in Canada. And if you're in Canada, there are incredibly tight rules that you have to follow if you want to legally and ethically raise money without getting yourself in trouble. I'm going to talk about a few of those rules right now, just so you understand that I understand what I'm doing. Because here's the funny thing. Because I'm the guy that's willing to go out there and stand up in front of everybody and talk about raising money. There are all kinds of real estate coaches in Canada that are secretly whispering that that guy Ken Dunn's unethical and that guy Ken Dunn doesn't know what he's doing. I would challenge those people that say that I don't know what I'm doing to show up at this event next weekend and listen for yourself and see. You are going to realize that you're a fool saying the things that you're saying because the people that know me know that I understand how to raise money at the highest levels. Not to mention the fact that as any sophisticated real estate investor will tell you, you need great advisors. So I have my own in-house attorney that we pay a serious, very serious six-figure income who guides me on everything to do with real estate, but it doesn't stop there. I've also retained the number one legal firm in Canada for anything to do with uh, fundraising and the law and real estate. They're called Castles. And anybody who knows the real estate game will tell you Castles is the largest law firm in Canada. They're one of the best. And Doug McCartney is my personal advisor on anything to do with legalities. And so everything I do raising money goes through my legal team. And uh, I'd like, you know, go to any real estate coach you know and ask them how many full-time legal advisors do they have on their staff? Because I have two full-time and I have Doug that literally uh, is on retainer with me. And I talk to him every single day about how to do this stuff. Now, what does that mean for you? If you're just getting started in real estate investing. Hey, Stefano, good to see you. Sita, glad you're here. If you guys are here with me now listening to me, I'm live with you. I'm going to answer questions. We're going to talk about real estate investing. And I could be here for the next hour if you guys have questions for you. But do me a favor. I'm, I'm broadcasting this live on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and in six different Facebook groups. And there aren't too many real estate coaches even know how to do that. <laughs> but do me a favor, if you're here with me now, uh, go into the chat and just tell me that you're here. Say hi, uh, tell me your name, what platform. I'd like to know what platform you're actually watching on as well if you're here with me. 
I want to talk about real estate investing um, and raising money right now. And, um, and and yes, I'm here to promote this event. If you have not bought a ticket, if you're in Toronto or you can come to Toronto for 97 bucks, it's under $100. It's two days. It's a full event next weekend in Toronto. It's all day Saturday from 10 o'clock till 5 o'clock and all day Sunday from 10 o'clock until 5 o'clock. We're going to be doing a deep dive into raising money for real estate. And during that weekend, during those two days, we're going to be talking about how to raise small amounts of money. So let's say you're just getting your feet wet in real estate investing. Here's the number one thing that you want to know. Okay, so the person that just said, hi, I'm in Hamilton. It doesn't, it just says Facebook user, which means above this video, you can see a little um, a, a comment that says I'm using StreamYard to let StreamYard tell me your name. You got to click on that link so you want to do that. Jeff Kellen, good to see you, man. Thanks for dropping by. The reality is if you're looking for just a little bit of money, so let's say you want to do a housing flip. Do you know the number one best way to get into real estate investing is by flipping properties? My friend Simon Yan is going to be there next weekend, and he's actually going to be talking about condo flipping. So there's another reason you should come. If you want to get into real estate investing, Simon is launching a coaching program where he's teaching people how to flip condos. What's that mean? You go find an old dilapidated condo, you renovate it. Renovations normally take 30 days. Then you resell it and you keep the profits. But if you're if you're doing any type of house flipping, condo flipping, anything like that, did you know that the best people at this never use their own money to do it? They use 100% other people's money, OPM it's called. So what you do is you go get a first mortgage from a mortgage broker from 70 to 80%. Then you borrow the rest of the money from a private lender, 20 to 30%. Then you figure out how much your renovations are going to cost and you borrow that money from another private lender. Then when you sell the property, you increase the value. It's called forced appreciation. I call it lift. I like the word lift better, but they mean the same thing. You increase the value of the property, then you sell it. And what I like to do is I'll, I'll get agents working for me to find the right properties. And I'll tell them, if you find the property, I'll buy it through you so they make a commission. But I will also let you sell it to make an even bigger commission. I'm going to talk about this in detail next weekend at the Raising Money for Real Estate event. I put the link above this video. Click on that link and buy a ticket right now. Because these are things that I didn't really say it well in the advertisements for this. But if you're wanting to get into real estate, I'm going to be talking about house flipping. Simon's going to be talking about condo flipping at this event. So it's perfect for somebody that's never been involved in real estate investing before. Uh, MB, I don't know who MB is, said, hi, Ken, on YouTube. Glad you're here with me. Excited that you're here. Super excited for it. Come next weekend. If you guys would like to make more money in the next year, in real estate investing. It's the best way in the world to make money. At this event next weekend, I'm going to be talking about house flipping. I'm going to be doing a whole training on the metrics you need, the spreadsheets you need to use, and legally, how can you borrow other people's money to do it? And I'm going to show you my strategies for doing this personally, including if you guys are not following me on Facebook, I'm going to put my link to Facebook here. I hope everybody can see it www no it, yep that's right www .ken or facebook com forward slash ken mr ken dunn that's what it's mr ken dunn if you take a look at that facebook page um you'll see there's over there's 10 i think there's 10 thousand nine ninety eight hundred people that are following me on that page the vast majority of those people are real estate investors and lenders so I can put a post on that page and I can say, I need to borrow X number of dollars to do this project. If anybody's interested, let me know. In fact, I will do that to prove it to you. Watch this. You guys want to see something really freaking cool? Let me see if I can do this right now. If I hit present, I think I can share screen. Yep. Shares. No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it on my, I'm going to do it through my phone. I'm going to say, you see here, I can go to my Facebook page anytime that I want. And I'm on my Facebook page, but I'm going to do it anyway. And you guys watch what happens. I'm going to say, anyone interested? Yep. 
in earning six figures passively in the next year, period. I'm just going to dictate it so you guys can actually see this. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Watch this. Anybody interested in earning six years passively in the next year? About six months ago, I bought Canadian hot tubs, period. We are scaling this company right now, and we offered some of my friends and family the chance to invest $200,000 for two years with a written contractual guarantee that they would get $800,000 back period. They're going to make the money between a combination of interest payments on the loan and royalty payments on the business. I gave this opportunity to 15 people to do this period. So far, we have had 12 people jump on this opportunity period. I wasn't going to get the money from the final three people, but I decided we could use it for our expansion project, period, new paragraph. If you're interested in learning more about this and have the capital ready to lend, and you are legally in a position where you're allowed to do lending, comma, type more info in the chat and I will send you a private message. If you don't know if you are legally allowed to do something like this, then please talk to your attorney, period. I'm also happy to send you some information from the Ontario Securities Commission's website for you to review as well, period, new paragraph. I need two more people to jump into this, period. Let me know if you're interested. So... So I can just put that right there. Watch this. Then I'm going to put some pictures. You guys are going to see this post come up on the page. All I'm going to do is put some pictures of the hot tub company. We got to go back a little ways to find them, though, because this was from last summer. Do, 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 do. Just let me show you some pictures. I should be able to find them really quickly. Here we go. This should be good right here. Yep, this is where we want to go. There's a point to this. Just bear with me for a second while I get these pictures up here so you can see it. Maybe I won't find them. I got all kinds of pictures of my boat when I look in the pictures here. There's a picture of a hot tub. Let's see if I can find some more. I guess I don't have enough, a lot of pictures of a hot tub in here. That's okay. That's enough, just the two. Uh, right, here's the point. Oh, here we go. Found some. Is this one? Yeah, this all there's just three little pictures. So here's the point. I just put a post on my Facebook page where I invited people, a couple people to invest $200,000 each. And you guys can take a look at that Facebook page. I will have a dozen people say more info and then what I'll do is I'll send them a message through social like a private message. And then I'll meet with them and I'll raise the $400,000 just like that. 
I can do it on a whim. Have you guys ever seen somebody show you right in front of them how to do that? That is just a small taste of what you're actually going to see at the event next weekend. MB on, on YouTube says, when you borrow other people's money, do they want high percentage returns? Yes, that's that's a great question. So what MB is actually saying is, when you when you borrow other people's money for a project, aren't because it's private lending, are they going to be asking for high interest rates and stuff? Absolutely, they are. Typically, for private money, the interest you charge is going to be somewhere between 12 and 15 and even 18%. Now, the next logical question you're going to be asking about that is how do how do you afford that? Well, friends, successful real estate investors know how to do the math right up front. So next weekend at the event, that's another thing we're going to be talking in detail about. What you have to do, and there's spreadsheets that I give my students to use, but you can use a spreadsheet and you figure out what's your cost of acquiring the property. What's the carrying cost? In other words, what's the money you're going to need to make the payments? Because that's the other thing, friends. I even raise the money I need to make the payments while I'm under construction, while I'm under renovations, until it actually starts to make money or I sell it. Then what you need to do is figure out what the renovations are going to cost. You figure out all these costs. And then you figure out what the interest is going to cost. And you do your calculations to determine if the deal will support itself with those interest rates. So all this bottom line is MB is that I won't buy real estate unless the whole deal can afford, can support the high interest rates. That's all part of the game. That's how we actually do this stuff. Um, and it's going to be amazing. And friends, here's the other thing I want to tell you about next weekend. It's not just me doing the training there. Although I think I could spend the whole weekend giving you all the information you need, but I love it when I get other experts to come and train at this event with me. So we have Kyle Ford that's going to be speaking all weekend with me. It's kind of like a partnership we're doing in this event. Kyle is probably one of Canada's top uh, investor related mortgage brokers. The guy is unbelievable. He is so far ahead of his competition that he even launched his old mutual fund to come up with private funds. He's been known to do the highest amount of funding of anybody in his field. And he's going to be there um, next weekend as well. Sherry just said, would you do JVs? Yes, absolutely. Joint ventures are amazing deals to do. And we're going to be talking about joint ventures next weekend as well. The fact that the point with a joint venture is you want to make sure that you're doing it under the right circumstances. So the, the most standard joint ventures that you're going to see in real estate is where you get somebody else who has the money and has the credit to be the passive partner. And what they'll do is they'll put all the money in in the project and they'll even qualify for the mortgages and you give them a certain percentage and you agree on what percentage that is. And then you're the active partner. And when you're doing a joint venture, you need to get your lawyers involved and they're going to set it up properly. They're going to do something called a GPLP relationship. This is a contractual relationship that you create for joint ventures. And there's two parties in the joint venture. There's a general partner. That's the person that's doing the work and doing the fight, like doing the construction and managing the project. And then there's the limited partner. That's normally the person that puts the money in or the group of people that put the money in. Um, JVs are great deals where you can get in and out quickly. Um, you don't want to do a joint venture type of scenario in a long-term buy and hold scenario, unless you have an exit for the joint venture partners. And an example is this, let's say you go out and buy a hundred unit apartment building and you know that you're going to pay 10 grand for it or 10 million for it, but you know that you can increase the value by, you can increase all the rent in the building by 25% and you can do some capital improvements, meaning that um, you're going to put new furnaces in, you're going to renovate all the, the buildings. So let's say doing all that stuff, you increase the value to 20 million. Well, you could get your LP partner to put, put all the money in to buy the place. So you could get a, a CMHC select loan, they call them, up to 70%. Then you get your limited partners to put the other 30% in. So you get $7 million from CMHC, $3 million from the partners. Then you offer the partners uh, a 30% return on their money 
but it's based on the fact that you've already figured out that you can do the renovations, increase the rents and double the value of it to 20 million. So then what you do is you refinance your CMHC select mortgage. You take an extra 7 million out of the property. You give the big return back to your LP partners. They exit. You keep a couple million dollars for yourself and you move on. We're going to talk about how to do all of that legally and ethically next weekend. Um, will you post the highlights on your Facebook page? Yeah, there's going to be a bunch of posting there all weekend if you can't make it, Robert, but we'll do our best. Um, I don't know who said this because if, if you're on Facebook and you want me to see your name, you have to click the link above this video and give StreamYard permission to do there. Um, but I agree with that statement. Kyle is awesome. Uh, he's amazing. Fantastic. Um, so on YouTube, it's really weird because they give you things like this. It says, hope you're well. Cujo Caputo. Yep. Thanks, Cujo Caputo. I'm well. Um, if you guys have any questions about what I'm talking about, feel free to do it. If you have not bought a ticket for the event next weekend, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.raisingmoneyinadigitalworld.com. There it is. Click on that link and buy a damn ticket. It's $97. This is the only time we're going to do this event in Ontario this year, in Toronto. It will not be in Toronto again. We are doing this event the following weekend in Edmonton, the following weekend, Calgary after that. In uh, March, we're going out to Victoria, British Columbia. In April, we're doing one in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and in Moncton, New Brunswick. But we will not do this event in Toronto again this year. Uh, and it's crazy. Look, if you talk to anybody that has a big real estate portfolio, like if you look at anybody that is playing in the big leagues and has, you know, $10 million or more in real estate, if you ever got a chance to talk to somebody like that and you said to them, what's the biggest pieces of advice you could give me to succeed in real estate investing? Here's what they're going to tell you. Two things. Number one, go to events. Get out and get to know people. You can't get to know people doing this. You can't get to know people sitting in your living room, watching a video, sitting on your phone. Go literally to events and meet people. If you come to the Raising Money for raising money in a Digital World, Raising Money for Real Estate event next weekend in Toronto, there's going to be 200 people there. These are all real estate um, people. Never, what is this? Never doubt Oh, for gosh sakes. If anybody knows the platform this person is on, this is somebody who's just taking advantage of the fact that I'm live here. Call her out. Like, like just cuss on her. I hate people that do that. That's horrible. Uh, it's bizarre. Anyway, if you come to the event next weekend, there's going to be 200 people there. They're all there for the same reason. They're real estate investors. They're wanting to learn new skills on fundraising, or they're wanting to get plugged in to what's the latest movements in fundraising. You're going to get to meet those people. You're going to have lunch with them. You're going to grab a beer after we're finished on Saturday with them. Um, you can't, you can't miss that. It's crazy. Um, if you guys want to know about Calgary and Edmonton, I'll give them to you right now. Um, we haven't launched the um, Calgary event sign-up page yet, but the Edmonton one we did, it's There you go. That's the Edmonton event right there. Uh, Jeff Kellens, I got my ticket. Fantastic, man. Look forward to meeting you there. Uh, we are not planning to be in Montreal, but we are doing one of these events in Ottawa in the fall. Um, I can't tell you where it is right now, but I definitely uh, will get you in, hooked up with that. Um, here's the other thing that you have to understand. When you're borrowing small amounts of money, OPM, when if you're doing a flip or you're buying a small building, there, there 
you don't have to worry too much about legalities to do it. There are laws that you have to follow, but the most important law, the most important thing you should do that's going to save your bacon and, and prevent you from getting in trouble is use lawyers in the transaction. And that, that should be really important for you to do. Now, uh, all that it's really simple. If it's a mortgage transaction, you're going to have lawyers involved anyway. So you want to make sure the lawyers write the agreements and that they register the mortgages properly and you're going to be good there. It's super important for you to, to do that stuff. Um, you you just, you can't mess up if you do that. Sherry, good to see you. Sherry's coming out to uh, see us in Edmonton. We were on a call together yesterday. She's a great lady. If you're going to raise bigger amounts of money, though, there are other rules that you have to follow. In every province, well, I shouldn't say in every province in Canada, in the bigger provinces in Canada, there are securities regulators that are part of the provincial government that dictate the rules that you have to follow. And I'm going to just share with you a couple really simple rules that are kind of accepted right across the country. The, the biggest one of these rules, I think, is if you're getting into bigger fundraising projects, you have to understand that if you're like, say, for example, you're selling equity in a company. So in a couple of situations in the last couple of years, I've been raising money for one of our companies and we're actually selling a piece of the company to do that. Well, if you do that, there are lots of rules that you have to follow. First and foremost, you have to create an overall business plan to their standards, and it's called a term sheet. Um, and that term sheet, everything that you do with the money and in the project has to uh, align with that term sheet. The second thing is, if you're raising money, you can actually raise money from people that you know already. Um, it's called friends and family and business associates. And this is part of the rules. But you have to be very, very careful. These have to be real relationships that you have with these people. These can't just be somebody you met and you want to call them a business associate. And if you ever get in trouble and the Securities Commission in Ontario or in, in Alberta or British Columbia, those three provinces have the most recognized and um, largest securities commissions or securities agencies. Well, if you ever got in trouble and they started investigating what was a business associate, they're going to want to see a long, long term track record for working with those people. So you can the easiest way for you to raise money is if you're raising money from people, you know, already. So friends or family or business associates, but you have to be able to prove that, you know, those people. That's incredibly important. Then the other side of the coin, too, is how much money you can raise. There are rules about how much money you can actually raise and how many investors you can actually have. Now, if you're doing a fundraise and it is seriously just with friends and family and people that you know, then legally you don't have to register your term sheet with the Securities Commission, but you have to have it. And you should have it prepared by a lawyer because they can question it and ask to see it. If you're getting into larger amounts of money where you are going to start raising money from people you don't know, then you have to know what the term accredited investor is. An accredited investor is basically somebody that fits into a couple different buckets. They have to be people to be accredited in Canada. You have to have at least, I think it's $300,000 in household income, a minimum of 200,000 from any one person. Or you have to have at least a million dollars in assets. Now, be very careful about that because assets actually means like if you were talking about your family home, just because you have a home that's worth $1.7 million, that doesn't qualify. If you had a house that was worth $1.7 million, your mortgage would have to be smaller than $700,000. But if that was the case and you had a million dollars in equity, that would qualify as the million dollars in assets. Really important stuff. So anyway, all that stuff, we're going to go over this in detail next week. And here's what I promise you. If you come to the Raising Money in a Digital World event next weekend in Toronto, you're going to leave there and you're going to have an exact strategy that you can use in 2024 to start making money in real estate. One of the biggest things that I'm going to focus on next weekend is how to flip properties and how to raise all the money you need to flip properties. I got a question for everybody that's watching me live right now, and I want you to go into the chat and answer this. If you come next weekend and I show you exactly how to flip properties, how to find undervalued properties, how to come up with the renovation budgets, how to get other people to do all the renovations, and then how to sell them and make a profit, 
on an average house that I flip, I'm going to do eight to 10 of them this year. I'm going to make $100,000 in net profit on each of them. That's between six hundred dollars and $800,000 in revenue in my company just from flipping properties. So I'm going to show you how to do that and check this out. I'm going to show you exactly how to get the money. And you know what's really crazy about that? Kyle Ford will give you the first mortgage. And he'll literally a lot of times go up to 70%. And then I have a list of lenders. It's called the lenders list. There's over 7,000 people on that list. And those people on that list will give you the other 30%. So that's 100% of the money. And those people on the lenders list will also give you all the money to do the renovations. So if you come next weekend, the people are going to be in the room with you that will give you all the money to do these deals. I want you to type yes in the chat right now. If you'd be willing to do two flips in the next 12 months that will make you $200,000 in extra income. Type yes in the chat if you'd be willing to learn that and do that. I'll teach you exactly how to do it next weekend. I'll show you how to get all the money to do it. Why wouldn't you do that? You know what I mean? Why wouldn't you do that? Let, let me let me look at it this way. And I'm not, I don't want to call anybody out. I really appreciate that you guys are here with me right now, but I want you to think about this for a second. Think about how much money you're making on an annual basis right now in your life. The average income of any person in this country is $50,000 gross. And the government's taking 10 to 12,000 of that. So they're making $38,000 a year take home pay. If you flip two properties, that's an extra $200,000 a year in income. I want you to go into the chat right now and I want you to be 100% honest with me. And I want you to type the number one in the chat. If an extra $200,000 in income in the next 12 months would make a radical difference in your life. Type a number one in the chat, if you will. Stand up. Don't be afraid to admit that you need help. Don't be afraid to admit that you could see an improvement in your life. Type the number one in the chat if an extra $200,000 would make a difference in your life next year. Right? I mean, that's what you're going to learn if you come to the Raising Money in a Digital World event. I mean, think about this. In that room, teaching will be the two guys in Canada that can get you all the money you need to do this stuff. How? Why would you miss out on an opportunity to come to an event where you can get to know those two guys? I, I mean, that's what you have to think about when you think about this. Anyway, let me get back to what I was telling you before. Remember at the beginning or a few minutes ago, I said, if you met somebody like that and you could ask them, how could... What would, what would they suggest for you to make more money in real estate investing? They'd say two things. Number one, come to an event. I think I've proven to you why that's important. Guess what the second skill is? If you talk to any successful real estate investor and you said to them, if there was one thing I could learn that would help me to succeed and help me more than anything else, what would it be? Guess what they would tell you every single time? You have to learn how to raise money. You have to learn how to raise money. Anybody's going to tell you that. You have to master other people's money. You have to learn how to raise money. You have to know what the laws are. You have to know the easiest way to do it, the most ethical way to do it, the realest way to do it. That's what it is, friends. That's what we're doing next weekend. Now, some of you guys are going to say, well... I've heard Ken speak before. It's going to be the same old stuff. If you think that way, you've already lost. You've already lost. Because if you've heard me speak before and you've heard me say this stuff before, why aren't you already making a million dollars a year? It's because you have to keep hearing it over and over again until you force yourself to do it. That's what this is all about. That's why I'm hosting this event. And if you're in my Investors Growth Syndicate Mastermind Group, or if you're in the Dream Cottage Business Coaching Program or the Buy a House with Sweat Equity Program, and you don't show up at this event next weekend, I pay very, very close attention to the people that are in my groups that show up to these events because that tells me they're the most serious. Those are the people that I want to invest the most energy in.
And for anybody else, look, I, I could sit here for the next two hours talking to you. Hey, listen, if anybody has any questions about anything to do with real estate investing while I'm here, um, go ahead and ask them. Just drop them right in the chat. And I'm happy to do that. Happy to do that with you. Just let me know who who has who if you got any questions, I'm happy to talk to you about them. Let me just see. I gotta turn my volume down on my phone here so that I don't. There we go. Oh Lord, what do we got here? To be good at at something you have learned and practice it and do it. Yep. Uh, we only have 39 tickets left now. 39 tickets left next weekend. It's going to be a blast. I'm freaking excited about it. It's called Raising Money in a Digital World. And the reason I called it that event, first of all, this is all about raising money for real estate. But I want to let you know that I don't feel I'm serving people and I won't be serving people next weekend if I don't give them every tool they need when they leave that event to take action. So we are going to be talking all weekend about raising money and you're going to know as much as I do by the end of the weekend, but we're also going to be talking extensively about flipping properties so people can start making money. I love it because whenever I talk about flipping properties, I get some person who says I'm the reason that the housing, the country's in a housing crisis. I love it when that happens. I'll be teaching people how to flip houses. Simon will be teaching people how to flip condos. I teach people how to buy old cottages, renovate them, rent them on Airbnb. And look, listen, let me ask you guys this. How many people um, would love to own a cottage, a beautiful five-star cottage for their family? You can use whenever you want. And whenever you don't use, whenever you're not using it, you rent it and you make money with it. And the money you make covers all the expenses of it and puts a couple thousand bucks in your pocket. I will literally teach you how to do that at the event as well. So we're going to talk about condos. We're going to talk about flipping properties and how to raise the money for those things. I'm just a newbie. Mishiak is saying, I'm just a newbie in real estate. How easy will it be for me to raise 100% of the funds for a flipping business? Um, Mishiak, it'll be super simple. And I'm going to go through it in detail with you next weekend. We're going to talk about flipping properties. There's going to be a mortgage broker that will be at the event next weekend that will give you 70% of the money. And then I'll show you how to connect with private lenders that will give you the other 30%. That's all there is to it. Uh, yeah, well, Robert, I don't even know if the government's the problem, really. The bottom line is... Where, where I think the government is really screwing up is it's real estate investors who are building the houses. Now, some people don't realize that. They think when I say real estate investors, I'm just talking about like the average person that's doing it for a profit. But if you think about any major builder, whether it's a subdivision builder, an apartment builder, building builder, any of those people or Equiton, like from any of them, they're all real estate investors. And I think what the government should be doing more is figuring out ways to make it even cheaper and more profitable for us to build houses and build apartments. If, if, if they could put some more incentives in place and make it worthwhile for me to actually build houses, I'd build a thousand houses and I'd make them all affordable. And that's, that's what, what this next weekend is all about. Rob says, so I'm interested in what you talk about, but from my understanding, you use other people's money you have to be able to pay the mortgage at 12%. So are you talking? So I, so let me just read this again, Rob. You said, so I'm interested in what you're talking about, but you, from my understanding, you use other people's money, but you have to be able to pay the mortgage on 12% interest. So you're talking kind 5K a month. Am I wrong? No. So Rob, Whenever you do a real estate deal, this is what I'm going to be teaching next weekend. You've got to go into the deal. You've got, before you get into the deal, you've got to know your way out. So it's all about doing proper mathematical calculations. But the long and the short of it is whenever I do a real estate deal, I borrow 100% of the money to do the deal. But that also includes all of the money to make the payments while I have the money. So as an example, let me give you a really clear example so you understand this. And I will teach this in detail next weekend. Let's say you're doing a house flip. So you find a house that you can buy for $300,000. 
I'm going to borrow 250000 from a mortgage broker who's going to arrange a private mortgage. And the payments on that are probably going to be about like 1500 bucks a month. Then the other 50 grand I need to buy it, I'm going to borrow that too. So there's another, let's say 500, so 2000 a month. Then I'm going to borrow 100000 to do the renovations. And that's going to cost me another 1000 a month. So it's going to cost me $3,000 a month in mortgages. So then I'm going to say, okay, how long am I going to have this before I sell it? And I'm going to actually look at the housing market and see how long it's based on the actual sales. A really great app to use is called House Sigma because it shows you everything that's sold. You can look at that and you can see in that area, how long is it taking to sell a house? So let's say it's six months. Well, if the interest payments on the money are going to cost me three grand a month and I'm going to have it for six months, that's $18,000 in interest that I'm going to have to pay, right? So what I do is I add that $18,000 onto the third mortgage that I get for construction costs. Those are called carrying costs. So I'm borrowing the money to make the payments too. So then I'm going to have this total cost of funds, this total cost to do the project. So in that case, it's 300 to buy it, 100 to renovate it, and 38 in carrying costs. So that's $438,000. That's my all in cost. But remember, that even included all the money to make the payments. I'm not going to do that deal and buy that house unless I know and I get the real estate agents to show me comparables so I know exactly what it's going to be worth when it's done. And I wouldn't do that deal unless I knew I could sell it for 700 grand. So if I sell it for 700 grand and I deduct the 5% legal fee or real estate fees, so that's 685,000, I subtract the 436,000 and I make 150 grand net profit. Interest payments are made, construction costs are covered, the acquisition costs, the real estate fees are covered, everything's covered. That's what I'm going to teach everybody how to do next weekend. Type, type yes in the chat. Every one of you watching this right now, go into the chat right now and type yes if you'd like to learn what I just taught, what I just explained to you. If you'd like to learn in detail what I just explained to you, type yes in the chat right now. And if you show up next weekend, the link is right above this video. Click the link and buy a damn ticket right now. If you show up next weekend, you will leave there knowing exactly how to do that strategy. It's freaking crazy. Yeah, and what's really cool, Rob, and for everybody here, if you guys come next weekend, I have a list. It's called the lenders list. There's 7,000 private lenders on this list who have all agreed to lend money up to 100%, and they've also agreed to lend the money for construction costs and carrying costs to let my clients do flips. And I'll show you exactly how that list works and I'll let you use it. I'll explain it all to you next weekend. My goal this year in 2024 is to make 2024 year the most profitable year I can for as many people as I can. And all you have to do is show up at this event. It's really that simple. You'll freaking love it. Anyway, um, we've been together for 45 minutes. If, if you have not bought your ticket yet, there's nothing I'm going to be able to do to get you to buy it. Um, click on that link. Get yourself signed up. Join me at the Four Points by Sheraton Hotel at the Toronto Airport next Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Everybody that's in the syndicate and inner circle, we're going out for a big party that night too. So don't make any plans for Saturday night. Just come. Come and be part of it. Buy and hold, Richard Auger saying, what is buy and hold instead of buy and sell? Buy and hold is where you would be renting the property. So you'd buy the property and hold it, you'd rent it out. We'll go over buy and holds. Um, another way to, to, another term you're going to hear to describe buy and hold is BRRR, <laughs> B-R-R-R. -R. It's buy, renovate, refinance, and rent. We're going to talk about all these strategies next weekend, and we're going to arm you guys with all the information you need to make a lot of money in real estate investing. Two days in Toronto next weekend. We'll see you there.